What's going on guys? Tom here and in today's video I'm going to be teaching you all about loops, signals, call deferred and the get node function within Godot. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do, I have a blank Godot project open here. I'm going to right click our world and I'm going to add two child nodes. The first one is just going to be a simple node and again the second one is also going to be a simple node. Let's attach a script to the first one. So let's say attach script and we're going to give this a name. We're going to call it loops and we're going to remove everything here apart from our ready function and we are going to start writing some loops. Now in Godot we have two kinds of loops. We have a for loop and a while loop. Now what do loops do? Well basically they run a specific block of code multiple times. If it's a for loop basically it will iterate through the values inside an array and if it's a while loop it will keep iterating through that loop and executing that code block until a specific condition is met. So we'll have a look at them both. We're going to start off with the for loop. For this, I'm going to define an array. We're going to say var a equals, I'm going to open some square brackets to define the values in the array. And we're going to give it some string values. Let's say one, let's say two and three. Okay, so now we're going to loop through those values and print them out to the screen. To do that, we're going to use a for loop, like I said. So we're going to say for, and we're going to give it a variable name for the current item within that array. And typically uh, inside a for loop, you'll use a variable name like i or n or x or y. We're just going to use i. And we're saying for i in uh, a. So we're going to basically say for every item within this a array, we're going to call it i and then we're going to do something with it. So let's press enter and you can see we are inside a code block now. And all we're going to do is print the value of i to the screen. Let's press play and see what happens. You can see here down in the output window, we get one, two, and three. So this for i in a loop has iterated through every single object inside this array here, and it's printed it out to the screen. Very handy. We can use this to iterate a specific number of times using a built-in function within Godot called range. So the range function takes a number, so for example, five, and what that will do, it will produce an array with five numbers in it. And it will start from zero and it will end um, at one less than what you've given it. So in this case, it will go zero, one, two, three, four. Let's just print those values out to the screen just to double check. And we print, we get zero, one, two, three, four. So we can see that that loop executed five times. If we count that zero, one, that's one, two, three, four, five times. So four loops are great for iterating over values inside an array or for simply iterating over something um, a specific number of times. So that is a for loop. A while loop, on the other hand, will iterate over something like we said before until a specific piece of logical conditioning is met. So for example, if we have a variable here it's called i equals zero, let's just remove all of our for loop code for now. Let's just comment it out with control K. We have a variable here called i and its value is zero. And we want to loop through a block of code while the value of i is, let's say, less than five. Okay, so while i is less than five, we're gonna execute the following piece of code. And again, all we're gonna do is print the value of i to the screen. Now, if I run this code right now, it will crash, okay? And the reason it will crash is because i equals zero I never changes in this instance, so therefore i less than 5 will always be true. So this code will execute and execute and execute, and it will constantly execute uh, until the game crashes, basically. So let's just, to prove a point, let's just play this game again. And you can see we never get it printing out to the screen, and it just completely crashes here. You can see that nothing's happening. If I try and do something with the game, it'll say it's not responding and we basically have crashed the game. Okay, so let's come up and stop the game there. Now, we need to fix that. Um, we can't have infinite loops in our game. There are certain circumstances, such as running background threads. Um, Multi-threading is a completely different topic for a different video. Um, however, in general, try not to create these infinite loop scenarios when you're using a while loop. It can be very dangerous and it can completely crash your game like you've just seen. So in this instance, what we're gonna do is as well as print out the value of i, we're also gonna increment the value of i by one each time. So let's say i equals i plus one. Okay, so let's run that code there. And you can see that this time it didn't crash the game and we get zero, one, two, three, four. So exactly the same as we got for our i in range five, 
except this time we're using a while loop to um, loop through a piece of code until we satisfy the condition i is less than 5. Now you can use this for all sorts of things. You could loop through a piece of code until a specific um, Boolean value is true, or perhaps you want to test for something being false. Basically, any piece of conditional logic that you can put in an if statement, you can loop using a while until that condition is met as well. And that can be really handy. Okay, so that's for loops and while loops. What we're going to do now is take a look at signals. So a signal in Godot is basically an event that a script can fire, and then another script on a different node um, can actually listen out for that event and react accordingly. So what we're going to do, first of all, we're going to take all of this code here. In fact, let's just take the while loop code. Let's remove all of this inside here. And inside our ready function, we're going to call a function called loops. That doesn't exist yet, so let's create it. Let's say func loops. And let's just paste the contents of our while loop inside that. Let's just double check that that runs OK. So let's push play. And you can see here it does. We get 0, 3 to 4. Let's close that. And now what we're going to do is we're going to define a signal. OK, so let's come up to the top of our script here. And we're going to define the signal by typing signal. And then we want to give the signal a name. So let's call it loop finished. OK, so let's come back down to our loops function. Let's go down a line. And we're going to go back an indentation because we don't want this to happen inside the while loop. We want it to happen once it's done. Uh, and just to be double clear about that, I'm going to add a blank line between it. You don't have to, but it just makes it a little bit clearer what's going on. And we're going to emit that signal now. So let's say emit underscore signal. You can see we're getting some auto completion. And you can see that it's recognized we have this loop finished signal here. Um, and these signals that you can see below are default signals that come from our node because we've inherited from that. But you can ignore those ones for now. We're just going to emit our loop finished signal. Okay, so let's save that. Now let's come over to our second node on the left hand side here. Let's right click and attach a script. And let's just call this something like signal listener. Okay. Again, we're going to remove all of this code here, except for our ready function. And now what we need to do is we need to get a reference to this first node on the left here. How do we do that? Well, inside Godot, if you are inheriting from a node or any child of a node, we have access to a function called get underscore node. This function expects a path to a node that you're looking for. In this instance, we're going to give it a string. Okay, we're going to use double dot to get our parent. So in this case, node two's parent is world. So double dot is going to get world. Then we're going to say slash, and then we're going to give it the name of the node that we're looking for. In this case, node just with a capital N and no number after it. And we're going to assign that to a variable. We're going to call it n. And then to connect to the signal on that node, what we're going to do is we're going to say n dot connect. Okay, we're going to connect to the loop finished. And now we need to say, okay, so which object is going to be dealing with this event once it's fired? Well, that's us. So we're going to say self, and that's a keyword that refers to the current object. And then it's going to need a string to say, um, what's the name of the function that's going to be dealing with this? So we're going to call it on initialized, or sorry, on loop finished. And notice I put a underscore at the start of that function as well. You don't have to do that, of course, but um, I'm just going to do that just as a naming convention. Then let's define that function. So func underscore on loop finished. And here we're just going to print uh, loop has finished. OK, now if we run this, this isn't going to work, but I will explain to you why after. Let's just press play. And you can see we get 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, but we never get that loop has finished. And the reason we haven't got that loop has finished, if I just save this and come back to our loop script, you can see that inside our ready function, we called this loops function. The loop went through and did the 1, 2, 3, 4, um, or oh, sorry, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then it emitted the signal loop finished. So it did that, um, for all intents and purposes, it basically did that inside the ready function. Now, if we come back to our signal listener, we um, connected, we got a reference to the node, and then we connected to its event inside our ready function as well. Now, what's basically happened here is that um, we have connected to the function after it emitted the signal. Okay, so this you might get a different result here. It might work the first time for you. It probably won't, but it might do. 
Um, but basically it's, it's called a race condition when two pieces of code are running simultaneously and depending on which one finished first, it can affect the outcome of the scripts. Okay, so what we need to do is basically find a way to defer calling this loop function so that we can guarantee that it runs after the ready function of our signal listener. To do that, it's really easy within Godot. We can basically wrap our loops call in something called call deferred. Okay, and this one's a string instead of just directly calling the function. So let's say call deferred loops. And what that's basically gonna do is say, I'm just gonna wait until nothing else is running. And when nothing else is running, then I'm gonna call this loops function. So in that case, let's just save that. Uh, in that case, our signal listener, all of this code is going to run. We're going to say, okay, get a reference to the node over here, connect to its loops finished, and assign the listener to that, to this on loop finished function. And then nothing else is going to happen, okay? The, the game is not really doing anything else. It's in an idle state for all intents and purposes. And that's exactly when this call deferred function is going to trigger. So if we just search in our help and we search for call deferred and have a look at the documentation for that, you can see that it says calls the method on the object during idle time. And that's exactly what's gonna happen here, okay? The game is gonna go into an idle state and it's gonna recognize that, hey, you, ex you wanted to call uh, this loops function whenever I went idle and it's gonna do that. So let's press play. And you can see here now that we get zero, one, two, three, four, and we get our loop has finished. Okay, so I know that got a little bit complicated there, but what I'm gonna uh, just do now is just go through these things one more time. So let's reinstate our for loop. So we had a for i in range of five, and then we printed the value of i out to the screen. So let's just add another print to the top here. So let's say print for loop, and let's add a print uh, while loop. And then we're going to say print emitted signal. Okay. And in fact, let's do a print at the top here. And let's just say call deferred loops function. And you can see here that we have a uh, connect. So let's do print connecting to loop finished signal. And we don't need to add a print here because um, we've already got print there. So basically let's save that. And let's, let's just run this and uh, see exactly what order everything runs in. Okay, so let's come to the top. You can see that the first thing that happens is we call deferred loops function. So we basically added that um, deferred call to our queue. We basically said, okay, the first thing I want to do is um, make a note that whenever the game is in an idle state, I want you to call this loops function as soon as that happens. The next thing is we connected to our loop finish signal and that happened inside our loop listener, inside our signal listener here, inside the ready function. And then we come back into our loops and you can see here we did the for loop, zero, one, two, three, four. Then we did our while loop, zero, one, two, three, four. Then we emitted the signal and then our loop has finished signal got caught and got dealt with by our signal listener. And that is basically it for loops emitting signals, call deferred, and get node. We used call deferred to add our loops function to the queue, so whenever the game went idle, we called that function. We used for loops to loop through a range using our range function within Godot. We looped through um, five values. Then we used our while loop to loop while the condition of i less than five is true. And then we emitted our loop finish signal. If we come over to our signal listener here, you can see that we got a reference to our first node here by using the get node function. We gave it a double dot path, which gets the current parent. And then we said slash node, which got our node here. Then we connected to the loop finished signal of the node. And then once the loop finished signal was fired, we actually caught it within this function here and we printed it out to the screen. So that is it for today's tutorial. If you found this useful, please click that like button. If you haven't subscribed already, click on the subscribe button and please hit that notification bell to be notified whenever I release new content. I release content every single Friday. And with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next video.